All right, in this video, I'll be covering a tool that, to be honest, I'm pretty surprised that we've gone this long on this channel. We haven't covered this yet. A uh, big shout out to one of our viewers, Orbit XYZ, for suggesting this video. And as always, guys, feel free to drop your video suggestion down in the comment section below. That is how I have come up with some of the best content was user generated from you guys. So if you have something you want to see, by all means, let me know down in the comment section below and hopefully we'll be featuring it in an upcoming video. So let's just get right into it. You see here I'm in Kali Linux and by default on Kali, you will have Searchsploit installed for you. So you don't have to worry about anything there. You can just type Searchsploit and you can run commands because it should be in your path as well. And we can verify that with the which command. You see here that it's located in the path under user bin. Now, if you are using Ubuntu or some other kind of distribution, you're going to have to most likely install this either from App Repository or GitHub, something like that, and set it up. But there should be plenty of installation guides out there to suit your needs. But most likely, the majority of people watching this video are going to be using Kali Linux or Parrot or something like that. And in that case, you're just going to have it pre-installed in your path, so not too much to worry about there. Another thing that I should mention is that Searchsploit is essentially just the command line version of exploitdb.com. So if I open up a web browser and navigate to exploit-db.com, you see this here, right? All this is is a database of known public exploits. Now, the most common scenario you're going to use this in is when you are doing recon against a server and you come across... For example, if you're doing web enumeration, you come across a web server running Apache, then you know, you know that is a third-party software. You might want to look to see, are there any known exploits that I could run against this that could help me get a foothold or you know, further move around the network? So Searchsploit is an excellent tool to do this. Now, also, maybe you have some information on the specific version of Apache that's running even better as you'll see here in just a second. Now, with Searchsploit, there's really only a couple commands that you need to know in order to make use of this in the real world and if you're going for OSCP or something like that. And I'm going to cover those in this video. Now, as always, if you want to see a full listing of the commands, you can look at the man page for Searchsploit or run the help option. So we could do man Searchsploit. This will give you the full comprehensive manual page, which isn't all that long because there's not too complex of stuff that you need to learn for this tool. You can also do search exploit, tack H, and look up the flags there. But just to break down what are the most common important things you need to know, let's go back to that example of Apache. So if I come across Apache, and I want to look for known exploits, I would type search exploit Apache, and I see all the known public exploits that have been entered in to exploit DB, which there's quite a lot. So... Most likely, we're going to have a version number, and if we do, that's going to help us narrow this down even further. So let's just say we knew that it was Apache, I don't know, version 2049. So we could say Apache 2049, 2.0.49, and searching for that, it narrows it down a lot more. Now, we still, as you... Notice here we still get some unrelated stuff coming up in the output, but we can see highlighted in red our search term here, so we can find this even quicker. Now, you compare that to the previous command, which is you have a lot more data to sift through, a lot of it probably not being relevant. So anytime you can fine-tune your searches on Searchsploit can be pretty helpful. Now, there are cases that maybe your version is vulnerable to one of these that are technically written for another version but still works on your version of the target software. So that's something to keep in mind too. You don't always want to search super granularly. Sometimes it can be a benefit to have your searches more wide because you might find a vulnerability that would work that might at first glance not appear that it would work. So just keep that in mind. Now the next thing we could do is we could basically take that exact same thing and use the web interface to find that. So I just go into the search bar here. You can type Apache. 
And I can see all of these, all the same stuff here, just in the web view. And we have several pages of results here. Not all of them are going to be relevant, of course. So we can also type 2049 and hit enter. And in this case, we only see this result. So if you're using the web interface, it functions a little bit differently in terms of how it's filtering stuff because we didn't get back a bunch of other stuff. We only got this one back. So that's how you can use that there. And the same rules apply because it's essentially the same thing just on the web. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the web version will always be fully up to date because it's being run on the exploit DB server. Whereas this search exploit command, all these files and all these exploits are downloaded on your computer in certain directories. So you're going to have to manually update this thing. And so it's always a good idea to update it first before running a search, each time you're about to run a search essentially. So the way you can do that is just do search exploit tag U, I believe for update. You supply the password and then that's gonna go and pull it down from one of the mirror sites. And that can take a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna kill that for now. But that will update it for you. And the next thing to know is that, okay, let's say we do the search for Apache, and there's a particular exploit that we wanna try. What do we do next? How do we actually make use of this stuff, right? So just going off of this list here, let's say that we find an exploit that we want to check out. The first thing that you want to take note of is on the right here, this is actually pretty useful information. So you have different types of exploits in ExploitDB. So you have remote exploits, meaning, you know, like remote code execution. You can run it across the network. You have local exploits, meaning usually privilege escalation, you run that on the same, you run that on the actual target machine. You have DOS, which is denial of service. So that's going to bring stuff down. So typically we don't want to run this as a pen tester unless it's completely fine to bring a service down. And also usually on CTFs, we don't want to run this either because usually we're trying to get a flag, not deny service. But yeah, just keep in mind, if it has DOS, <laughs> be cautious and make sure you only run it if you know what you're doing, of course. And we can also gather some more information that's pretty useful. Is the exploit written for Linux, for Windows, OS X, etc.? You can gather that from this stuff here on the right. And so let's just say that we want to take a look at this Apache CouchDB remote privilege escalation exploit here. This is written in Python. So the first thing I do is I double click here. And what that does is highlights everything. I do a control shift C to copy it. Alternatively, you could just do a right click copy. And this is going to be really useful. You'll see why in a second. Now I could download this straight away to my, well, really to my local directory. Technically, this is already downloaded on my machine, but I can move it into my local directory if I want to. Let me just navigate to a directory. But before I do that, there's another command that a lot of people don't know about, and that is the tack x command that lets you do a preview of the exploit before you download it. So, or should I really say copy it to your current directory, right? But you're going to use this path. So I'll do search exploit tack x, and then that path that I copied press enter and now I can take a little preview of the actual exploit and I can see, you know, make sure that this is what I want to use before I copy it to my current directory. So let's say that I am good with the exploit. I want to copy it to my current directory. Pretty much everything is the same. I just need to change the attack X to attack M for mirror. I'm going to create a mirror copy in this directory our current directory, there you see it right there. So now I can interact with it in Vim or whatever text editor you prefer. Start making modifications to the exploit if we need to, whatever the case may be. Now, how does this correspond to the web interface? You might be wondering, right? Well, you see all the exploits on ExploitDB have this number. That's how they're named. So this particular exploit is 44498. So one thing I could do, I mean, just going back to the command line tool, I could search on 44498 
And you see, that's one way that I can find that exploit. But we can also bring this back to this console here and say 44498. But another thing we can do is we can actually utilize this information if we pull something up on the web interface. So what you'll notice is if you click on any random exploit here, you'll see this number here, 51002. This is the identifier. So it's under slash exploits. So to pull up this one, I can say 44498. And now that pulls up the exploit that we saw from Searchsploit just through the web interface. And from here... It's pretty easy if you want to download it. You can just click the download. You can view the raw version. I could even use like wget or something. So if I take this raw version here, this is another way I could copy it just to show you real quick. Actually, I think I'm having internet issues on this VM, so I couldn't show you directly. But essentially, just do a wget on it, and that would pull it down in the current directory. That's another way you can do it. You can also just click the download button like I showed you earlier, but really those are the only commands that I'm using on a consistent basis with Searchsploit. Searchsploit tack U for update, tack X to preview, and tack M to mirror copy it to your current directory so then you can work with it. And you always want to copy it to your current directory. The reason being is you might need to make some modifications to the exploits and you want to have the original one still intact. So that's why it's always very good practice to run that with the tack M command to copy it to your current directory so you can make whatever modifications you need there and it's not gonna mess with anything long term. If you have to go back to that exploit, you can just mirror it again. So hopefully this one is of help to you and let me know down in the comment section below if there's any questions you have and also what you wanna see next on the channel. And if you are learning this stuff, trying to get into the field, then definitely you're gonna wanna check out the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know down in the description below and as always, if you want to get into some technical content, I have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.